the Gaussian mixture model uh, models algorithm is an um, extension of the k-means algorithm that we've just seen, but it takes into account a very important uh, understanding of nature. And that understanding is that in nature, many behaviors have the natural distribution and therefore appear in the form of Gaussian curves. It began by a very famous uh, story uh, of uh, Pearson, you know Pearson? That's the same Pearson from Pearson test. And uh, well done. Uh, that they studied uh, the form of uh, shells. Um, I'll make, you can see here, that you can read later this the complete story, it's very nice. Uh, bottom line is that uh, they picked, or I think Pearson, um, sorry, uh, well done, and his wife collected uh, different shells and uh, crabs uh, and uh, they measure 23 different parameters about those crabs and then they saw that there was no really one uh, cluster uh, or there's no one way to uh, cluster uh, these uh, crabs and actually understood that the underlying mechanism here is something like that so like there is one species okay that this is its natural distribution so it's in a form of a gauss of a gaussian curve right and then there's another distribution or another species that this is uh, its own uh, curve but of course you don't see that in nature in, s in nature when you do statistics this is what you get this is like two modes right um, it's B modal, that's the name. B modal with two modes, um, a kind of curve. So now we need algorithms to detect these two Gaussians, these two subspecies. And of course, it cannot look uh, uh, so nice. It can look uh, even more complex, something like that. So this is one Gaussian, this is another Gaussian. And when you look at the data, this is the data that you see. And of course, there could be not only two modes. It's not necessarily B-modal. It could be many different uh, components together. So this is what we call the mixture model. It's a model of mixtures. And it is, of course, much more complex. And to give you some kind of a, a perspective about it, let's see this video. This is in a three-dimensional way, OK? And it's only three dimensions. Sometimes we have more. So you can see the distributions. But these distributions are stamped out of just two Gaussians. Okay, so these are the two um, um, shapes here that you see. You, und you understand the problem? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the space that w the the problem space that we are dealing with here. And um, I like to show uh, examples um, from you know the scientific literature. And uh, what I did here is, so many people uh, teach and talk and study Gaussian <coughs> mixture models, GMMs. But I said, hey, why not use some kind of a text mining algorithm to decide who is the best researcher or professor in the world on GMMs? So uh, how I did it, we will see in the text mining chapter, but uh, Victor Lavrenko, uh, is the one that uh, algorithms uh, detected as the best researcher and professor in the world for that. And there are many papers that he published about that. So I'll, so I'll show you some of his work. Uh, but just very, very briefly, I will say, uh, I will explain the idea. It will take like two, three minutes. Just try to go with the flow. The idea here is that these are the observations that we have. Let's say if it is, was only one dimension. So we have the yellow group and the blue group. 
and we can calculate the standard deviation if we assume that we have a Gaussian distribution so we can uh, um, um, calculate the standard deviation of each Gaussian so for each Gaussian we have the sigma and we have the mu the mu is you know where is the mod where is the uh, central point okay so we can assume these are the uh, two Gaussians that we have and they explain the, the data the most or the best but what happens if we don't know the source, if we don't know what is the mu and the sigma, okay? If all these uh, um, data uh, points are like blank or like white, and we need to assume what is the mu and what is the sigma of uh, each population. So here we go to the science of probability, okay? And there are different ways to calculate the probability. It's, it's pure statistics, it's very, very simple. But what it means is that we can say, okay, with the highest lack likelihood is that these data points are blue and these are um, uh, yellow. It's not like you see here, this is like the true nature and this is the best approximation that we can have and then we understand that we have the chicken and the egg problem very similar to what we had in k-means so whether first we calculate the centroids which is in our case the mu and the sigma or do we calculate the standard deviations the, um, uh, the actual uh, assignments of each data point to the proper uh, cluster and therefore to the proper Gaussian and from that we can calculate the standard deviation and the mu. And uh, this is the uh, way we do that in, a very, in an iterative way. The methodology is going uh, through iterations very similarly to what we had in the k-means algorithm. I'll show you uh, what it means, um, how, it, how it behaves um, in the computer, in like inside the computer. We begin with just like initial Gaussians and from iteration to iteration we change the mu and the sigma according to the data points that belong, that are associated with this Gaussian. So again, as you can see, the Gaussians get adjusted. Now, it doesn't look like Gaussians, but it is Gaussian, right? So we have here this, um, this uh, uh, shape is like the 80% or 90% of the Gauss, where the point, the central point is the mod, and around it, to all different direction, is the bell curve. Uh, of the uh, things, okay? You want to see it again? Fascinating, okay? So we begin with something random, okay? Random Gaussians. We assign patients or data points to the proper Gaussians and then we calculate again the standard deviations and the modes. And then when we calculate it again, we can move, uh, we can change the attribution of each patient to the uh, closest Gaussian, okay? And as times go by, we end up with these Gaussians. But we have like a big group and subgroups and then the same group the same It's not a big group and a subgroup. It's not a big group of us and a subgroup. For example, <laughs> this, what you say, what you call the big group, the mode is here at the center, right? Mm -hmm. And the standard deviation is very, very large. And this is another group with another mod and another very, very tiny standard deviation. Now, for these patients, the most probable Gaussian that they belong to, according to the calculation of probability, is this one, is the tiny one. And for this one, it is less likable that it belongs to this Gaussian so it means that it belongs to this class. But again, you see here the trial and error, the play between uh, doing the uh, initial Gaussians and then adjusting it, adjusting, adjusting, adjusting until we reach 
convergence. This is the way we analyze the data in order to retrieve information out of it. So the information is these groups, these Gaussians that we saw. And the dots that don't belong anywhere, is there like outliers? No, it's not uh, it's that it's out. Maybe it is outlier, but you can always connect it. It's just uh, I don't have ways to sh really show all Gaussians, because each Gaussian is endless. There's no limit, right, to Gaussian. But we just saw the 90% or something. OK. And uh, the way to do that is an algorithm called uh, uh, expectation maximization. It's very similar to the uh, k-means algorithm. We start with initial guesses of parameters. And then there's what we say E step, which is the expectation. It is where we estimate the memberships giving these parameters. And then the M space step, which is the maximization, where we estimate the parameters giving the memberships. OK? So you see E, M, E, M, E, M, until we reach convergence. This is the expectation maximization algorithm. It's good here for the GMM algorithm with Gaussians and so on, but it's a general algorithm. So this step of making a guess and then doing all those ex um, um, adjustments according to calculations of how good is the guess, this is uh, what enables us to reach the information, to reach the conclusions. OK. Uh, and here are some uh, nice examples uh, to end. Uh, anemia patients and controls. So here we see uh, the red blood cell volume and the red blood cell hemoglobin concentration. And I say to you, there are two groups here, the control group and anemia patients. And using the GMM algorithm, we can see how, what, uh, how the, the Gausses, the Gaussians are distributed. Here you see it in a three-dimensional way. What it actually means, this is the healthy, this is the anemic. OK, so you see different Gaussians. But they, they are merged together, as we know. So we run the GMM algorithm. This is where we begin with. And we converge over time. This is what we have only after 15 iterations. And again, each uh, shape here is a Gaussian curve. And uh, eventually, we can detect uh, who are the uh, anemic patients and who are the healthy ones. You we use GMM a lot in different disciplines in medicine because of the natural distribution, the nature of biological phenomena that they are around Gaussians or natural distributions. So we use it in neurology, in histology a lot, of course, uh, in imaging and so on. Uh, so we can detect uh, uh, points of interest uh, using this algorithm as a, and not other algorithms. And I would like to show you um, uh, something very nice, a, a work that was done on a prostate uh, images. Okay. So you see, we begin with the uh, with the analysis, but there are here many different Gaussians, Gaussian curves that all together create this shape. Okay, so just see it as a mixture model of different Gaussians that can uh, uh, define and detect automatically the uh, borders out of the image data. Okay. With that, we end, for now, the topic of unsupervised machine learning. We will go back to it when we talk about uh, artificial intelligence and about personal medicine. Next week, we have the other side of the coin, which is supervised machine learning, which is what we can derive from the data when we give it some kind of supervision. For example, when we show examples, we show to the computer examples of interpretations. So that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, see you next week. Thanks,